welcome to the vlog. I have a secret admirer. I was sent flowers today and I actually know who my secret admirer is. My flowers just arrived and I wanna go downstairs and see my beautiful flowers. My secret admirer is myself. <laughs> I hate myself. So this morning I woke up feeling real lousy, real pregnant, real gross. I was just like, I want pretty flowers. I want someone to give me pretty flowers. Don't worry. I always get pretty flowers from my husband, from Corey, from my parents. Like, you know, on special occasions, I get pretty flowers. But I wanted pretty flowers for no reason today. And so instead of like just hoping that someone could read my mind and bring me pretty flowers today, I was like, I'm gonna buy myself some pretty flowers. And so I did. And I'm so excited to go see them. I got like a fall bouquet that's like in a pumpkin or something. So I'm really excited to go look at it, but it's all the way downstairs. So let's go. By the way, I've never shown you what I have to do for my gestational diabetes stuff. I have to show you guys that at some point, like all my like pricking of my fingers and all that jazz. Maybe I'll do it another day. I'm too tired right now. I don't know why I turned on the camera. I'll see you guys when we go downstairs. <laughs> what? Yeah. You said daddy and baby Flynn love you? Yeah. You love me? Yeah. I love you too. Yeah, look at I got. Look at I got. That's Whoa. a present for mommy. Yeah, it's for you. It's for me? And oh my goodness, thank you. Ooh, look at my beautiful flowers. They came literally in a pumpkin. And I even wrote a card to myself. Isn't that so sweet of me? I'm about to do a kitchen book time. You about to catch some books? Yeah. Wait, is it book time? Yeah, book time. What kind of books? Like books. Like books? Yeah. Did you catch anything? <laughs> What'd you catch? I caught a muff. You caught a muff? Yeah. Where'd it go? He was really nice. He wanted to let it go. Yeah, and then flew away. You flew away? Yeah, and then I got my, my bug catcher wet, so I have to get a new one. You have to get a new bug catcher because that one got wet? Yeah. That's the one this beetle going back. That. You want that beetle go? Yeah, I want that. Okay, let's go let him go. Let him go. See, thanks for hanging out with me, little guys. Daddy, you let him go. Okay, thanks, beetle, for hanging out. Just so you guys know, a muff is a moth. He calls moths muffs. And he calls spider webs spider wolves. And I think it's very cute. Daddy's got a present for you. Close your eyes. Do you know what that what is? is? It's a concrete boom boom! Concrete boom boom! boom. Woohoo! <laughs> I can pull off it! Concrete boom boom? Yeah, I can! Oh my gosh! Now I can play off it! Okay! Let's play off it! Are you so happy? Flynn has been asking me for a concrete what? boom pump for weeks. Do you know how hard it is to see the concrete boom one? pump yeah. toy? Concrete boom ones. pump. It looks like it's a hundred years old. <laughs> hey, open it. You want me to open it? Yeah. Ooh, it smells like turds in here. Did you go poo poo? No. Smells like poop. Whoa, Flynn. Here we go, dude. Concrete boom pump. And this goes up. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Is this everything you hoped it would be? <sighs> wow, concrete boom pump. Whoop. Oh, I just came down the stairs to get my camera so that I could go back upstairs to do tortilla talk. I'm so out of breath. I need to wait a minute before I go back upstairs. So I'm gonna start tortilla talk down here, even though I don't have my tortilla. So I went and looked at my vlog for questions. So if you guys have any questions for tortilla talk, you can leave them in the comment section below. But I just have been loving reading the comments lately. You guys are all so nice. And like so many encouraging things are being said and kind things. And I love reading your stories and I just love you guys. So anyway, tortilla talk question. Do you think that you will ever
ever go back to Broadway when the twins and Flynn go older. Um, that's from Maddie. I would love to go back on Broadway. My plan is once the twins come to eventually start trying to tour again, if anyone would buy tickets. I feel like by the time the twins come and I'm able to start touring again, people are gonna be like, Miranda who? Colleen who? Like, and I'm not gonna be able to sell any tickets. So I think that dream might not come true, but <laughs> that's my dream. And I would love to do another Broadway show, but I'm worried that uh, that's not gonna happen. I'm not worried, well, I shouldn't say that. But I feel like I was just so lucky that I got to do it at all. I don't have any expectations of that ever happening again. It was also like one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I don't know if I could do it again. It was hard. Carrie asks, Tortilla Talk question, how did Gus and Daisy react to baby Flynn? I'm currently 36 weeks. You get it, girl. 36 weeks, you've made it so far. By the way, I was 37 weeks. No, I was 36 weeks when I had Flynn. So it's any day now for you. I'm currently 36 weeks and have two cats. I'm so curious to see how they'll react to the baby. The baby. I love watching your videos and feel like we're going through this pregnancy together. Yes, sister friends. They were fine with Flynn. My cats are pretty cool. Like Gus is kind of a douchebag, but like in a funny way and in, in an endearing way. Like he won't hurt you unless you approach him when he doesn't want you to. Like if you try to pet him, he'll be like, ugh. And if you keep trying to pet him, he'll be like, Literally stop. And if you go for it like a third time, he'll be like, okay, I'm gonna scratch you. But he gives you warning signs to like leave him alone. Flynn understands those warning signs and like, also Flynn has chased Gus around the house and Gus just runs away from him. Like Gus doesn't, he's never hurt Flynn. And this one doesn't really have a brain. <laughs> So she doesn't notice anything and she doesn't care about anything. Like big dogs walk up to her and she's just like, hi. Like she just like cares about nothing. So they both responded really well. So every cat is different. So I don't know how your cat's gonna respond, but my cats were pretty chill about it. And Flynn and Daisy are really close. They love each other very much. Tratita question. Has your fear of needles having something in your skin gotten better since you get IV so frequently? Yes, I still hate getting IVs, I hate it. I'm very grateful for it, but I don't like it. But I'm better at getting needles because the IV kind of hurts because it has to be a thicker needle because they have to like have stuff going into your vein. For some reason, whenever I get the IV put in, like it hurts and then it doesn't hurt anymore like once the IV starts going. But now when I go get my blood drawn, because I get my blood drawn all the time for random tests and stuff, that never hurts anymore. Like barely, I can barely feel it. Like when they go to draw blood and I used to faint every time I get my blood drawn. I would faint when I would get shots. And now like you can give me a shot and I'm like, do it again. I didn't feel it. So yes, my fear of needles has gotten much better, but I still do not like IVs. That was honestly one of my least favorite parts about having Flynn. I know that sounds really weird, but when I was done having Flynn, you know, I was just trying to recover at the hospital and they make you keep the IV in like on your hand and like tape it down. I hated that. Like that's what I remember the most vividly. Every time a nurse would come to the room, I'd be like, can you take this off now, please? And they'd be like, no, you have to wear it for 24 hours or whatever. And I was just just like, please take it out, please. Like I hated having it on my hand and they would not take it off of me. And it made me so upset, I hated it. And that's like, was the most traumatizing part. Obviously it was all really intense and painful and like, you know, birth is really hard, but like that, it hurt. Like, I feel like I was, it hurt me. Like, I could feel it the whole time. Like everyone's like, you don't even feel it when it's in. Like you can't even feel it. Like I could feel it in my vein and it hurt. Like my hand was sore. And even when they took it out, they finally took it out. My hand where they had the IV in was sore for for like weeks. Like I hated that thing. So I'm kind of dreading that with the birth of the twins. Like I'm like, oh, I have to get an IV and it has to be like taped to my hand for days. I don't like that, but I am better with needles. Anyway, I've kind of caught my breath again. So I'm gonna go back upstairs, get my tortilla on and we'll finish our little chat because I have a couple more questions that you guys have asked. Hello, welcome to Tortilla Talk with Colleen. I've gotten out my teeny tiny microphone for my tortilla talk this evening. Savannah asked, tortilla talk question, have you tried explaining the pandemic at all to Flynn. I imagine that would be really tricky. What does he think masks are for? I thought this was a good question and I've never really talked about it before. Flynn does not understand what a pandemic is. He doesn't know what COVID is. He couldn't even walk when the pandemic started and he could barely talk. He was basically just like a little baby. It wasn't something we could explain to him because he couldn't even speak English yet. We just kept thinking it would end and it would end and it would end. <laughs> never really did. Finally, it came to a point where we started taking him places and he needed to wear a mask and that was a hard transition however we started buying him masks way before we started taking him out of the house just because we didn't know how long it was gonna last and so we would pr 
practice wearing a mask at the house and like show him his mask and let him get used to the idea so it wasn't like just one day we were suddenly like here put this on your face you know he got used to seeing his mask we'd ask him if he'd want to put it on he'd say no and we'd be like okay and wouldn't make him do it until eventually one day he's like yeah I want to wear it it just takes him a while to warm up to things so we kind of did that and then now he likes wearing his mask when we're out and about he understands that he has to wear it we don't give him an option when we're out and about we don't go like do you want to wear your mask we tell him if we're inside of a store he has to wear his mask and we wear our mask we all wear masks and how cool are the masks and he doesn't know that it's because of a pandemic he doesn't know anything different he just thinks people wear masks when they go in stores and that's just how the world is and he knows that it protects him from germs is what we've said and he doesn't know what germs are but somehow that explanation just worked <laughs> he was like why do I have to wear a mask one day and I or he kind of asked why or what it what it was for something I don't remember but I remember telling him it protects you from germs and he was like okay and I don't think I've ever really explained germs to him so somehow that answer worked but he's too young to understand what a pandemic is he doesn't know any different this is the only life he's known because before the pandemic he was only one he doesn't remember any of that time in his life so the only things that he can remember are being at home with mommy and daddy 24 and 7 and we rarely go out and when we do everyone's wearing a mask so that's just what he's used to i don't know what the future holds but you know obviously we'll explain it to him when we need to explain it to him or if he asks but it just seems unnecessary right now to explain the pandemic and vaccinations and the world and what everything is he's too like all he cares about is bugs right now this is from grace she said how is the nursery going and when will we see it i'm so excited the nursery has still not begun. <laughs> so I am having someone do it and it's just hard getting our schedules to align because the people who are doing it are very busy people and um, our schedules just have conflicted, but they're still planning on doing it as far as I know. We've communicated about it and it seems as though it's happening. I just don't know that these babies are going to have a room when they're born. <laughs> They might not have a bedroom <laughs> right away. We'll see. I don't really know. I'm kind of just like waiting for them to be like, okay, this is the day we're gonna do it. I'm kind of like, okay. I'll post a video about it. We're gonna film the whole thing and you guys will see a video of it whenever we get around to doing it. Grace also had another tortilla talk question. Are you going to announce the names before or after you give birth? Are you just waiting to see what happens? We don't know the names yet. We're very close on names. We've got it narrowed down, but I keep thinking like a new name's gonna pop into my mind that I'm gonna be like, that's the name. So we haven't chosen in yet so I can't announce the names because we don't know what they are but we probably will wait till after they're born just because I've told some people like some of the names that we like and I just think people don't understand that like when people are telling you baby names they like they should just be like those are all great like that's your only reaction you should have to someone saying names that they like <laughs> I think because when I tell people names that like we've kind of liked and they go like mm, I don't like that like well what like what if that was like my top choice and now I know for the rest of my life and like I name my kid that and then I know for the rest of my life like this one friend of mine thought that name was stupid like you know what I mean so whereas if I just name my kids what I'm gonna name them no one after I name them is gonna tell me to my face like mm, I don't think you should name them that like it's on their birth certificate it's over you can't say anything I never understood why people kept baby names a secret like I always was like why do pregnant people be like oh I'm not telling you that I'm not telling you the name I'm not telling you the name I always thought that was so weird but now I understand because every time I've told people names that I kind of like, they have like a strong opinion on it. I don't know. I just think that's kind of weird. Unless I say like, what do you think of this name? Like, I think it's weird to tell someone like you don't like a name that they really like. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, moving on because I feel like this might cause some controversy. Oh, this wasn't a tortilla talk question, but I like this comment. This is from Amanda. She said, birthing classes are not for everyone because in my vlog yesterday, I talked about how I hated my birthing class. It gave me an anxiety attack. Everyone tells you you have to have a birthing class, but I don't think that's true. Birthing class was not for me and I'm so grateful that I didn't keep going to birthing classes and I'm so grateful that this time I'm not doing a birthing class. Anyway, Amanda said, birthing classes are not for everyone. Let me explain. The last class I took in my third pregnancy, they made me hold an ice cube and told me how to focus and get me to forget the cold and pain from the cold. That was interesting, but that is nothing compared to actual birth. It did not help me, although it might help others, but I had been through this two times already and it just felt comical to me. That was the first and last class I took and all three kids came out fine and were thriving. I'm with you on the pregnancy classes. 
When I did my one birthing class with Flynn, that was like the first thing and one thing that she did to be like, this is what a contraction is like. And she made me hold an ice cube. And I was like, I've never had a kid. I've never given birth, but like, I have a feeling that contraction pain is not the same as holding an ice cube. This is just cold and uncomfortable. And my brain is telling me, let go of this because you're gonna get frostbite. Like you're not supposed to hold on to ice cubes. And I understand the reasoning. I understand, so don't come for me. That it's all about like willpower in your mind and lasting longer than you think you could. Like if you think I can't do this pain anymore, or it's so cold, I can't hold on to this ice cube anymore. Then you count five more and see you can last five more seconds. You can last 10 more seconds. You can get through this pain. And I get that that's the concept, but I also thought it was stupid. <laughs> No offense, I hope that doesn't upset anyone, but like for me, that did not work. For me, I was like, holding an ice cube is not gonna help me get through labor. And it didn't. When I was in labor and I was having contractions, which are extremely painful, I was not thinking about when I held an ice cube and how I held it for longer than I thought I could. Like, and also I did not like that she made my husband hold an ice cube and she was like, now you understand the pain of a contraction to my husband. She was actually a very good birthing coach. I don't wanna knock her because she was actually very sweet. She was very good. She didn't talk like that. <laughs> but she was kind of implying like, see, now you understand how hard this is. No, like I don't want my husband thinking that that's what my contraction pain was because it was not, it was very painful and nothing like holding an ice cube. Also, everyone's contractions are completely different. Like my contractions were painful kind of right away, even when I was only like one and a half, two centimeters dilated. And when I was at four centimeters, I was in so much pain, like begging for something to take the pain away. And all of my pain was in my hips. And a lot of women feel contraction pain in their back or they feel it or they vomit because the pain is so strong or they feel it just in their stomach. Everyone feels it in different places, but mine was all in my, my hips. Oh my God, you guys, I can't even explain the pain in my hips. It was so bad. So yeah, by the time I was four centimeters dilated, I was like, give me whatever you can give me. I'm not doing this. Also, I recently found out that the word is dilated, not dilated. Like literally, I, I've had a child. I have been 10 centimeters dilated before and I have always thought that it was dilated until like a few weeks ago I was like is it dilated because I like looked it up for some reason I'm gonna look it up again because it's like still blowing my mind I'm gonna look up dilate it's not a word it's not a word did anyone please tell me someone else out there thought the word was dilate and not dilate like literally blew my mind when I found out it wasn't dilate like she's three centimeters dilated it sounds like people are saying dilated not dilate anyway am I just an idiot does anyone else out there think that the word is dilate Dilate? Is that just my stupidity? I'm gonna go have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Kind of nervous about it, only because I was supposed to have a doctor's appointment later this week, and my doctor called and was like, "Actually, I need to see you tomorrow." So I'm like, "Why?" But I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, so that's a little nerve wracking. And that's all. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, I, and I didn't say that to worry anyone. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure she just had something on Friday when my appointment was, so she's just adjusting her schedule. But I panic. Okay, goodbye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.